wow, this is great news. 2v8 is back. The queue times were a little long last time. Other than that, it was super fun. So let's go ahead and queue up. Now, you guys know me. I'm mostly a killer main, like 70-30. And especially since Deathslinger's in the mode and they just patched him to fix the bug he had, I can't wait to hop into 2v8. Now, in any game, it's usually good to have something to do in the interim while you're queuing up, whether that be a YouTube video, hanging out on a Twitch chat, anything. It's just a good way to kill time. Me in particular, I have a really good method of passing time in 2v8. So yeah, I didn't really want to make a video about 2v8 because I feel like I kind of overdid it with my videos on the first wave of 2v8, which by the way, a lot of you are going back and watching those now that wave two is out and I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, but I didn't realize that there's like sort of like a new issue with this wave of 2v8 that is making it significantly different from last time and kind of accentuates 2v8's worst problem, which is the queue times. So yeah, let's go ahead and talk about it. To start on something positive, I will say that 2v8 on Survivor is actually pretty all right, at least for me personally, with the near instant queue times. Uh, there's a lot of uh, easy ways to get old poems that are usually pretty challenging. As long as they don't have anything specific to do with like specific perk loadout, uh, you can do a lot there because there's seven other teammates instead of just the other three. So you can kind of dilly dally a bit more. So I've been using it to get a lot of old tome challenges done. So that's cool. However, 2v8 on killer, wild fun has been extremely draining because queue times can be anywhere between 10 to 20 minutes. There was even a time where I played this week where I hopped on the game and I got booted out of the lobby twice after a long queue, resulting in me sitting in queue for almost a full hour. A full hour before I got a game. Is that extraneous because I got kicked out of the lobby twice because of DBD jank? Just kind of, but also DBD does that, so that's kind of like part of the whole deal, isn't it? That's part of the full package that not only are the queue times long, but you're playing a buggy game, which may just kick you out of queue anyways. <laughs> so yeah, I ended up waiting almost a full hour for a game and it was freaking awful. Most positive Peters would point out at this point that killer games and 2v8 are fun and exhilarating, so it's well worth the wait. Just relegating the queue times to something that behavior should just work on and try to figure out over time and not something that's a serious issue, which I feel like in the first wave of the mode was far more true and far more accurate, but this time around, not so much. I think the main core issue here is that behavior has added something called a momentum system, which is designed to keep games more balanced, uh, which actually often leads to games going quicker rather than being more balanced, no matter who has the advantage. Meaning that if you sit in a queue for 15 to 20 plus minutes, you are getting games that are now three to five minutes on average. To shortly explain it, you're essentially punished on both sides for playing the game, also known as a negative feedback loop. Uh, for each gen finished, survivors get a 5% debuff, and the killers, whenever they cage somebody, get a 2.5% buff to survivor gen speed. You know, now you don't exactly have to be a math whiz to see how this isn't really going to balance out at all. There's eight survivors, three cage states each, while the debuff for survivors starts at seven gens. This is why you're seeing a lot of killers slugging in 2v8 because they've realized that if they cage too much, it's extremely easy to overtake the debuff that survivors get just for completing gens. There's just like so many opportunities to apply the survivor buff that the debuff doesn't really come into effect that much. And obviously with the slugging method to get around this, that is making survivors that already generally don't want to play the mode for the lack of innovation and incentive, even more frustrated when they do play the mode because then they're just getting slugged out. And this ergo increases the queue times. For the, I've, I feel like there's a thing I've seen a lot with this is like, how are you getting slugged out in 2v8? There's seven other people. Why aren't they picking you up? Well, welcome to the joys of solo queue, <laughs> where sometimes you get good teammates and sometimes you get people who I feel like it's their first time picking up a controller. You cannot help that. So what's the overall situation? You're waiting 15 to 20 minutes for games that ultimately end up ending quickly. It's not even about winning or balance. It's just a purely matter of time investment. We have lives, jobs, families, friends, etc., to get back to. So can, sitting in queue for 20 minutes just to speed through the game really quickly and end up right back in queue is quite frankly just kind of agonizing. There was some weirdo on my Twitter that was like, sounds like a skill issue, as if I was mad that I wasn't like winning all my games. Let me make it abundantly clear. When you roll the survivors at like five or six gens, yeah, the games are still three to five minutes only. <laughs> it's, it's for both sides. Games are quick regardless of who's winning, which is funny considering the rationale that Behavior gave for even adding this momentum system was to keep the games from being too lopsided because that was a criticism in 2v8 wave one. However, it seems to have accelerated the issue, if anything. This format, by the way, is not inherently a bad idea because if both sides had great cues, this would be awesome. That be, literally means more games and more gameplay. 
uh, that 100% would be a positive if both queue times were good. However, one side is sitting there for 20 minutes while the other side is sitting there for 20 seconds. <laughs> so while this is awesome for the survivor side, it's pretty abysmal for the killer side. So yeah, you're sitting here probably watching this video while you're in a super long queue. Hi, hello, hopefully it's going well. <laughs> the TLDR of this video is that the 2v8 wave two brings back the same issues that wave one had, but now seems worsened because the shorter games make the sitting in queue way, way, way longer. And those shorter games are spurred on by the momentum mechanic. The momentum mechanic in theory is a good idea and it's made with the thought to keep both sides in check, but often just because of the sheer amount of cage states in the game, it just really doesn't end up mattering and just ends up speeding up the game either way. I know there's a lot of theories on how to fix 2v8 queue times, like having bots take up 2v8 slots or in increasing and in increasing the incentive on survivor exponentially. And while uh, personally, I do think that uh, exponentially increasing incentive would massively help since you know people will always like blood points <laughs> blood points is just an, an easy thing to get people to go to uh, in instances where we've underfed people blood points like the personal offerings in the halloween event uh you've seen people kind of like shy away from certain events so just giving them an opportunity to earn a a, a metric ton of blood points will always bring people coming so i think that's like a good band-aid fix but realistically the main issue with 2v8 is that survivor kind of just doesn't have anything really flashy or awesome that you kind of can't do in 4v1. I think one of the best additions uh, to 2v8 is that you can rebuild pallets if you pick a specific role as survivor, which is really, really cool and add something dynamic and interesting that you cannot do in 4v1. Um, like this on the flip side of 2v8, or the, the killer side of 2v8, where you're playing killer with a friend, which is something that you've never been able to do in Dead by Daylight, literally ever, and experimenting, experimenting with the different um, combinations of killers leads to very exciting, fun gameplay with, with a friend, or just even just out playing with a random because it's just a dynamically new experience. With 4v8, it's really kind of like you're just playing Survivor except with more teammates. Even the abilities being kind of like wacky and strong, besides rebuilding pallets, they're kind of just extensions of already existing perks uh, in the game. So it's not like it's like dynamically new or worth not queuing into the normal mode over. Furthermore, I've seen this a lot because I follow a lot of uh, Survivor main uh, Twitch streamers and people on Twitter. Uh, survivors are essentially all just one character that's just reskinned over and over and over and over and over again. Uh, they essentially only have one power set. So one of the ways that you offset that is by bringing dynamic and weird and interesting builds. That way it kind of sort of feels like you're playing a different character. But obviously you can't do that in 2v8 because you're very, very hard locked to the classes that they give you. So one of the things that, one of the only things that survivors can do to even like mix up their flow of gameplay to make it different uh, has been taken away <laughs> so uh, not only is there not really enough flashy new stuff to make the 2v8 experience more dynamic but it also takes away one of the things that makes it makes survivor not dull <laughs> so that does not help at all so yeah you can do band-aid fixes like just slapping on a bunch of bump points but ultimately the survivor mode experience needs more exciting and fresh gameplay to really draw the survivors into this mode consistently and until that is there Honestly, sucks to say, but 2v8 Q times are just always going to be this way. Yeah, what are your theories on what will make 2v8 better? Or, well, if you don't want to answer that question, I know, <laughs> I know a lot of you are probably sitting in queue right now. Very, very frustrated. So just go ahead and vent in the comments below. I know when I had a 15 minute queue the other day, I wanted to shove my head through a brick wall. So yeah, just let it out. <laughs> this is a safe space for your frustrations. Other than that, that is going to be it for today's video, friends. Thank you so much for watching and spending part of your day with me. Hopefully I've made it a better one. But otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. And if I do not, I'll see you when I see you. Bye-bye.